Hello, good evening guys, thank you for joining me yet again. Tonight, I'm going to try and t Hey, can you calm down please? Mother, will you stop making a noise with them blooming plates? Kids, shut up, come on, I'm trying to talk to you. Everyone gather around the TV, come on. Right, I'm going to teach you about electrolysis. If you already metal detect, you'll already know what it is. If you don't, you probably won't know what it is. Basically, what it is, it's it's when chemicals are broken down by using an, ele an electric current through water or a solution. That, that's all it is, okay? Sounds boring, but bear with me because it's actually quite interesting to watch and to do. So, here is an electrolysis kit. I bought this for £9.99 pence here in England. And what you get in a kit is a plug with a lead. It's basically the same as most um, phone chargers. Okay. But on the other end, you've got two clips. If I can get them out. Uh, alligator clips, basically. Yeah. So you get that. Um, a spoon, which I presume is made out of stainless steel, indeed it is, and I don't really know why they've put them in, just to help you pick things out later on. Um, and the actual bowl, this is what you're going to be doing it in. Now that comes for £9.99, not a lot of money. In America, on the other hand, and I don't know about the rest of the world, I can't find them online on eBay for sale. So firstly, there's an opportunity for somebody to make some money there. But a lot of people in America do make their own. As I say, all you need is a phone charger, you clip off the end, you split the two wires, you put an alligator clip on each end, get a bowl, and away you go. You're already there. you just got to make sure the voltage is between, usually between 6 and 12 is best, or 5.5 and, and 12 volts. This one is 6 volts, okay? Now, it's tempting to go for a 12 volt, and I would suggest don't go for a 6 volt. If you go for the higher voltage, if you go, or even more, 18, but if you go for higher, all you're going to do is burn your metals. So, I wouldn't suggest going any higher than 12. Ideally, I'd stick with 6. Uh, it will take you longer to do it, but you won't burn the metal. Now, I'm not saying this is how you should clean your coins. I'm just demonstrating this is one method of how you can clean. I'm not just going to show you coins. I've got various artefacts, all found metal detecting by myself or people who have sent me them, um, especially for this cleaning. So, in these tests I'm going to do, I'm going to be doing 10 items. And some items might get destroyed. That's a risk I'm willing to take. Um, I don't apologise for that because I believe... By destroying one item of mine, I might be saving a thousand people out there going out and doing exactly the same thing who've watched this video. So, bear with me, watch the video, see what you think. You might like electrolysis, you might not. Don't worry, there's going to be loads of other cleaning ideas uh, coming up, because this is like a series I'm doing, especially for you. Okay, we'll get straight into it, but before we do, I just wanted to show you something. Because the last time I sat in this corner, quite a few people, about eight people, asked me about the picture in the background. Because I didn't show enough of it and they wanted to see it. So there you go. All you guys who are into uh, motorbikes, that's the picture. It says, let the good times roll by Roy... Blah, blah, blah. It's just some cheap copy or something. I don't know. I don't know what bikes they are. I've not got much of an interest in bikes. I had a scooter. But that interest soon went when it got stolen. Right, let's get on with it. So the first thing you have to do is fill your bowl up with warm water. Now, I have to kick off a bit here. Can you see that? Can you see that? This is brand new, I've just bought this. It's leaking. The company who sold me this, it's leaking. I should name and shame you, I really should. It's a good job uh, I'm a nice guy and I've got some spare things, so I'll fill this with water and I'll see you back at the table. Absolutely disgusting. 9 99 and they can't even give me a proper bowl. 
So just very quickly I'll show you the 10 items I'm going to be cleaning. I've got a, an English penny, an Australian coin there, uh, a, a plaque, a copper plate, a bird ring, a lead soldier, a brass ring, a silver ring, a button, I don't know which metal that is, uh, an English one pound coin and a half silver old English sixpence. So that's what I'm going to be doing tests on. So here we have our bowl with uh, some hot water in it, well warm water, I've actually got hot water I'll be honest. Um, and in there we put some salt. Now you really want just normal table salt but I've only got coarse sea salt. Um, you need it to dissolve basically. So I'm going to throw that in and stir it around and hope I can get it to dissolve. On top of that, put in a little bit of baking soda as well. That'll be fine. Now, you can leave it at that, you don't need to add anything else, but um, I like to use a little bit of lemon juice as well. So there's the solution, ready to go. So then you have to take the red crocodile clip and attach it to the stainless steel spoon. You can use other metals and to be honest I'd, I would advise it, um, not brass, brass doesn't work very well, um, but with stainless steel it does give off quite a dangerous odour if you breathe it in. Uh, I've never known anyone be killed or anything from electrolysis of this kind of size but better to be safe than sorry really unless you're me and you just don't care. The other thing goes onto the object you want to clean. In the first thing I'm going to try is an English penny from 1938 which is bronze. It's basically 95.5% copper, 3% uh, tin and 1.5% zinc. So you get that to hold on there and the important thing is, whilst you're doing this, do not have the items touching and do not ever have the clips touching. Because if you do, if the clips touch, it will basically just blow out your, blow out your, your box, you know, your adapter. So don't do that under any circumstances. So I'm going to put the spoon in there and the penny in there, making sure they don't touch. And now I'm going to plug it in and you'll see the effect straight away. So there it is fizzing away. As soon as you plug it in it will start fizzing. And then little black bits will start to come off. The water will start to go green. It's just very important you don't let that touch the spoon. And it's actually very close to my spoon there so I'm going to have to watch it. And it should take about maybe one and a half, two minutes. Um, it's just a rough guess really, you never know for sure. And then once that's done, we'll take it out and on to the next step. You take that out, take it off the clip, make sure they do not touch. At this stage, what you could be doing is putting your next one in whilst you're doing this next stage. So after the electrolysis stuff, you shove some uh, some more baking soda on top. Just wet it a little bit and rub that on with your fingers. Not very hard, especially if it's anything worth anything of value. You shouldn't have to rub it very hard. And it should come up clean. Now the first thing I'm noticing as I'm doing this is it's not coming up clean. It's rubbish. It's rubbish. No, I haven't. I haven't done it long enough. That's the problem. And it was a very, very grimy penny. So I'm going to have to do this again. You might have to do it twice. You might have to do it three times. But I'll do it a few times and then we'll come back to it. At the end, um, I'll do all these ten items. I've taken pictures of them all before. And I'll show you them all afterwards. And we'll, we'll, have, a, we'll have a look. We'll compare them and see which metals electrolysis works on well. And which it doesn't. So this is now the third attempt on this coin 
Um, as you can see, you, you want them as close together as you can really without them touching. You don't want them touching because they'll basically they'll weld together will the two metals. I'd also advise wearing gloves as well when you're doing this. I've stupidly not. I've actually got some about 50 feet away from me and I haven't put them on. Um, and I've got a little cut there on my hand and it's stinging me now. So yeah, whenever you're dealing with chemicals, wear gloves, that's my advice. So after cleaning the first coin, I would say I'm not happy with the results at all really. I'd say that's quite poor. Yes, it's got a lot of the dirt off, but it's not got enough off. See what I mean? It's it's neither clean nor dirty. It's in between. So personally, for bronze, I would I would not uh, use that again for bronze. That's my advice. But uh, moving on, plenty more to do yet. Very important to remember when you've finished uh, with all your cleaning and you're not touching any more chemicals with it, put it in some still water um, to get all the chemicals off. I'm going to just leave it soaking in there until I've finished all the rest. Next up we have an Australian 20 cent piece from 2005 which is copper nickel which is 75% copper and 25% nickel what you're going to have to do is compare the amount of copper and nickel and tin and zinc or whatever are in the coins I'm putting in um, to the ones you'll be using just look on uh, Wikipedia and see which compounds uh, which elements your coins out are made out of By the way, if you are ever doing this and you find it's the spoon which is uh, fizzing and not the item you want to clean, it's because you've got the, the plugs on the wrong way around. Just change them over, the crocodile clips. So there you have the Australian 20 cents. That's come up a lot better. A lot better. Whether it's because it's a lot more modern or it's because of the metal, you decide. But uh, yeah, copper nickel. Seems to like that. Next up we have this copper plate. I think it's a, sad, a saddler or something. I think it says Saddlemeister or something like that. It's got the name Hopper Garden on the bottom, which is the village I used to live in, in Germany. Um, and it says Rex at the top. But we'll see how, how copper reacts to this. And there it is cleaned, but you can't really tell whilst they're wet, that's the problem. I'll leave it in to soak and we'll uh, evaluate them later. And this is an aluminium bird ring I found in Germany. As you can see, aluminium no problem at all. 1954 that bird's from very good very impressed aluminium for electrolysis a very good uh, suggestion and now we have a lead toy soldier also found in Germany He seems to have come up quite well. You can see the red paint there around his neck and on his waist there. You couldn't see that before. That's lead. Now for a brass ring which I believe I found just a couple of miles from here on the beach. It's already quite clean. So whether this is going to uh, improve or not I don't know. But it's certainly fizzing. There you have the brass ring, after cleaning. I can't tell to be honest, I'll have to look at the before and after on that one. Looks clean to me. And now a silver ring, also found on the beach. 
again it's not too dirty but we'll see we'll see what happens to that inside see if it cleans up any better there we have the silver ring after cleaning now for a button I found in Germany a modern English one pound coin which are uh, made out of nickel brass which is 70% copper 24.5% zinc and 5.5% nickel I hope that cleans up because I want to spend it 2012 I believe it is there you have your cleaned one pound coin seems clean but it's discoloured sent it a strange looking colour last but not least we've got 50% uh, silver sixpence from 1946 I think it is and there you have your sixpence it's come up very nice indeed right so that's cleaning with electrolysis let's just run quickly run through each one I'll show you a before and after picture of each firstly we have the one penny as you can see absolutely absolute disaster completely ruined the coin I would never clean a bronze coin using electrolysis again Second up, we had the Australian 20 cents. Did a very good job of that. Very impressed. Third, the little copper plate. It cleaned it up a bit. Still nothing special, but, you know, acceptable. Uh, the aluminium bird ring. Absolutely perfect. Did a very good job on aluminium, which is very easy to clean anyway, to be honest with you. The lead soldier, that came up very well. It brought up the colours, which I didn't see before. The brass ring, that looks a little bit shinier. The silver ring, again, a little bit shinier. The button, absolutely rubbish, completely trashed it. And I think that's made out of brass, I think. And then we have the one pound coin, which is cleaned up pretty well. The pictures are a bit misleading because I've taken the after pictures at night and it's a different light. Um, it has cleaned it up well, but it has discoloured it. It's a different colour. It'll still go in a machine though. And then lastly was the 50% silver coin. Brought that up very well. Impressed with that. So electrolysis, my personal thought on it. I don't use it. I've used it before, but I destroyed too many things playing around. Like, uh, like buttons and coins. I destroyed them. So I stopped it altogether. It's something you have to test and test and test and keep testing for ages until you master it really, I suppose. But to master it, you're going to ruin a lot of coins and a lot of artefacts. So I wouldn't use it, but I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying you should. That's entirely up to you. So that's this video, guys. I'm sorry it's been a bit boring, but educational videos are boring, aren't they? I'll catch you next time, I'll try to get out and uh, show you something a bit more exciting next time. See you later, bye bye.